the Geo Archon, this is the only chance you'll get all year. Guess it's a good thing Venti brought it up earlier. Otherwise, we definitely would have missed this year's Rite of Dissension. Well, Venti brought up the time, but Baimon knows nothing about where it is. <laughs> Look, we're already in Liyue, so let's go ask some of the locals. Oh, right. About the Geo Archon Morax. Did you know the Mora that we use is named after this god? But it seems impolite for people from outside Liyue to refer to the Geo Archon by that name. So we should refer to the Geo Archon by the name Rex Lapis, like the people of Liyue do. Rite of Dissension. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Isn't that today? Once a year, Rex Lapis bestows upon us his divine prediction, guiding us on how to run Liu for the coming year. Last year, it was the Yuhang of the Liu Qixing that was given the honor of asking for the divine prediction. Ooh, Paimon knows this one. Mon's dad is to freedom as Liu is to contracts. Liu has a strong focus on business and trade. The Liyue Kissing, the seven leaders of the seven enterprises of Liyue, hold true control over Liyue. That's what foreigners always say. But true control over Liyue will always be held by Rex Lapis. The Qixing is comprised of mere mortals. Rex Lapis is a god. Mondstadt's god is nowhere to be seen, whilst our god is forever with us. Stay in Liyue long enough and you'll see. Given that you just left your godless city, it's time you experienced what it's like to be in a city whose god has walked with it through all of history. Oh, are you also foreigners here for the Rite of Dissension? <sighs> to think I've lived in Liyue all these years and never come to see this before. <laughs> I guess it's like they say. Locals never visit the tourist spots. Ah, I wish you well on your travels. Li Yue always welcomes you. You too wish to bear witness to the rite of dissension? <laughs> Me too. We all do. As a businessman myself, how could I not take interest in Liyue's most important business trends? The 17 predictions given last year made more than a few ripples throughout the industry. Mm. What's more, there's been a rumor going around that the Tianxue herself, Ning Guang, has been acting secretly in the shadows. She wants the rocks created by GeoVision holders to be exempt from taxation. Wow, that's some super professional legal stuff, that is. <laughs> to be on the pulse of the predictions and the market is what makes this harbor what it is. Among the seven, Rex Lapis is the oldest deity. His keen sense of strategy is well trusted among his people. Understanding the predictions as soon as possible can make all the difference in making your fortune. F fortune So where can we see this Rite of Dissension anyway? <sighs> You're not at all close. Not to mention that if I gave you directions, as foreigners you'd get lost along the way. So better to head to Yujing Terrace, to the high ground. It's the highest place in the harbor. Sounds like the best place for trying to communicate with deities, no? I not heard that the best time to make a wish is today, during the oh. Rite of Dissension. Those not Wanna involved in the proceedings try? are not permitted to go any further. <laughs> Killjoy. Oh, you also want a little Adepti luck, too? <laughs> Seems you know a lot. 
Making a wish during this time is sure to get you the blessings of both the Adepti and Rex Lapis himself. I've already made my wish, so you can take this. Great! Thanks! Your first time in Liga? Actually, it's my first time to see the Rite of Dissension, too. Ah, look, that's Miss Ningguang of the Liu Xixing. Only those who have control in Liu can preside over the Rite of Dissension. Oh yeah, not sure if you knew, but most of the Adepti appear in the form of various beasts. I heard that when attending these kinds of formal occasions, Rex Lapis himself appears as a celestial cross between two of Liu's ancient mythical creatures. Ah, oh, sorry, I shouldn't interrupt your wish. Please, take this. Great! Now that we're all done with the wishing, guess we can just wait here for things to get started. Hmm, who knows how long that Miss Ning Wong lady is gonna take. upon us. Lapis has been killed. Seal the exits. What? What's going on? Did she just say Rex Lapis is the Geo Archon is dead? Oh no! The Millilith! Looks like they're nabbing suspects who got too close. Paimon's freaking out! The killer is amongst us! Wait, we got close. Are we suspects? Wait, where are you going? Oh no, there's a whole bunch of soldiers out there too! Your identity! You may not be the killer, but we can't let them get you! But can we even get out of here safely? There's nowhere to run! Hey, girly, hold still. Stop! Stop! Come with me. Huh? Uh... <sighs> 
Everyone's exhausted. So insensitive. You have no idea just how tiring fooling around... Wait. Just who are you exactly? Call me child. Child? What, so we're supposed to dote on you? <laughs> no, no, not at all. It's an alias of sorts. In Mondstadt, I don't suppose you came across a Senora by any chance. Senora. Childe. <gasps> You're Fatui, one of the Harbingers! Oh, no. Don't worry. I'm not looking for a fight. Senora gave you quite the bad impression, huh? Pfft, that woman. Can't say I'm a fan either. Right. Let's forget all about her, shall we? I'm here to help you. Sure, I may be one of the Harbingers, but hear me out. I'm not a bad guy. Oh, okay, perhaps I'm kind of a bad guy, but I'm not here to give you any trouble. Would it be too much to ask for you to keep the sword sheathed? <sighs> I thank you for your knightly nobility. I heard of your deeds in Mondstadt, so I couldn't help but notice you during the proceedings back there. And because I had my eye on you the whole time, I know it wasn't you. Someone else was clearly behind it. But, regrettably, given I'm a Fatui envoy from Snezhnaya, there's no way I'd be trusted after something of this magnitude. The ruling Chi Sing of Liyue has always been overly suspicious of us. Well, can you honestly blame them? <laughs> Guess I shouldn't try to deny that. Okay, sure. Maintaining a distance between strangers is probably a good idea. Either way, I'm already used to it at this stage. But right now, if you want to clear yourselves of any suspicion, you need to get yourselves to Northland Bank. Staying here isn't an option. As the old Liyue saying goes, the walls have ears. Northland Bank. Correct. This bank was opened here in Liyue by Snezhnaya. Though everyone knows Liyue is the most enterprising in Tevat, Snezhnaya is not short of change either. Yeah, well, poorer nations don't seem the type to have diplomats that come around acting the way yours do towards the Knights of Favonius. <laughs> here, let me give you this. This is a... I'm not sure exactly. Sometimes all money can buy is things, and not a name for oneself. All I know is that it's a sigil. A sigil to keep the mighty and illuminated Adepti from bringing harm to you. Adepti? If you head north from the harbor, then west from Gwaili Plains, you will eventually reach a stone forest known as Jueyun Karst. The people of Liyue believe it to be the abode of the Adepti. Legend or not, they believe it. As such, offerings to the Adepti are made at its borders. Nobody dares venture in. But I have no need for believing. Not when I know for a fact that the Adepti truly exist. Hate to admit it, but your Fatui intel seems all right. But why would we go looking for Adepti anyway? <laughs> oh, my little friend. There are plenty of reasons mortals seek the blessings of Adepti. Money, health, love. But you, you will go for justice. Justice? The Chi Sing will already have dispatched the Millilith. They'll be seeking out the assassin from amongst the onlookers. But how could a mere mortal kill a god that can sweep aside entire armies? Rex Lapis never gave up his power as a god. This level of crude response is beyond what is called for. How suspicious. Your thinking is even more radical than my own, honorary knight. Even now, the Northland Bank wouldn't be able to hold the Millilith off for long, but the Adepti can clear you of any wrongdoing. Liyue was founded by the Geo Archon and the Adepti. Of course, it was built by force. Look for them, and be faster than the Chi Sing's messengers, so you may give your version of events first. If there is anyone that can help you in Liyue now, it can only be the mighty and illuminated Adepti. And who might we be? Those that dare enter Dreyun Karst. A sigil of permission. Many a season has passed since one was last in the presence of such an item. 
He before you is the mighty and illuminated Adeptus, Mooncarver. Speak, Traveler. What business have you here? Actually... It's the Assassin! They dared to flee here to Juryun Karst. Uh, sir, we've already stepped too far into Juryun Karst ourselves. We... Ah, there's no choice. Apprehending the Assassin is top priority. We must press on. Disturbing our borders. See them gone. One will not have interruption. Who goes there? One with my blade. Take the target alive. Submit for judgment. I swear by my sword. Preposterous. Preposterous! The Liyue Qixing. Utterly disappointing. How could someone possibly assassinate Rex Lapis during the Rite of Dissension? And then place suspicion upon the attendees? Hmm. Traveler. Of the unjust accusations placed upon you, one has become aware. The mind knows its answer. Though one must consult with one's fellows, lest the mind be misguided. Go, take your sigil of permission. Carry with you a message. Mountain Shaper and Cloud Retainer can be found here. Only fate will decide if you shall find them. Only fate. There exists a conqueror of demons, a guardian Yaksha. Go to Wangshu Inn. There you shall seek him. Oh, this seems to be Wangshu Inn. Compared to Joyunjian, this place seems basic. Are we really gonna find an Adeptus here? Let's take a look. Paimon reckons he'll be on the balcony. <laughs> Doubt we're gonna find him in the kitchen. To the blind, everything may not be as it appears. A sigil of permission? You came prepared. Though this only prevents me from hurting you myself, doesn't stop you from getting hurt in other ways. Uh... Paimon doesn't get it. Too much contact with our world is breaking the rules. Mortal souls are not as robust as those of Adepti, nor can your blood carry this level of Adeptal energy. It's for your own good. Leave. Now. Wait a sec! We came here to... Ugh! Paimon's... peeved! All he does is think about himself! Paimon wants to give him an ugly nickname! But if you take off an Adeptus, the only thing you'll probably ever find in treasure chests is cabbages. Blech. <sighs> Guess we should go ask the boss lady of the inn about just how she manages to talk to Adepti. 
Oh, you've already met Xiao. Not bad. Not often he's in a good enough mood to agree to see people. That's his good mood? Oh, yes. The Adepti are very hard to come by. Many people go their whole lives praying to them, never once actually getting to see one. When the Geo Archon built Liyue, he borrowed power from the Adepti. But most of them only know how to protect Liyue by fighting. So for many millennia, it has instead been humans who have led Liyue. You really know a lot, huh, boss lady? <laughs> it's not boss lady, it's just boss. Anyway, seeing as you have the favor of the Adepti, things should be a lot easier. Well, if you want to know my opinion, if you keep Xiao in a good mood, things should be okay. Good mood? Can't really imagine what a good mood looks like for that vigilant Yaksha. <laughs> Will be interesting, won't it? Come to think of it, I've never seen him smile either. How about this? You go see the chef for a bowl of almond tofu and a plate of whatever it is you're best at making. Almond tofu is one of the few human foods Xiao likes. The other dish is up to you. Up to us, eh? Hmm, what do you think you're the best at cooking? Wow, never heard of that one. Paimon wants to try it. But if we're going to be cooking for an adeptus, perhaps a satisfying salad would be the safer choice. You see him on a break, kid. Scram. Scram! Whoa, this chef guy's service is about as good as that Wagner guy's back in Mondstadt. <sighs> I see. If it's for the boss, then guess I don't have a choice now, do I? But my heart's not really in it right now. Not enough to make a dessert as painstaking as almond tofu. And why is that? A fencer's hand must be steady. So too must the hand of a chef. But my hands... I'm... They're not steady. Because, uh, a, a traveler once told me that this inn... is haunted. And then just now, just now, in the kitchen, I saw something. Something not right. This chef looks so intimidating, but speak of ghosts and he becomes weak. I keep thinking. Even Wang Shu Inn isn't safe. I can't keep a steady hand for something like almond tofu. All right. In the name of high-quality almond tofu, we need to go check this kitchen out. Doesn't seem to be anything. Uh, uh. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, you saw it too. There really is a ghost. How could I... Okay, so he's useless now. What do we do? Forget it, let's just go see the boss lady again. <laughs> Scared of something so insignificant. Hard to believe he was once a notorious bandit. You don't seem that afraid of ghosts, boss lady. Gods and ghosts. I've seen it all before. Come to think of it, others don't seem to know there's an Adeptus here at the inn except for the boss lady. Shh. Say any more and you'll be divulging my little secret. Right. Best you two be off. Go see to it that that little ghost doesn't go scaring anybody else. Not that I'm ordering you around. It's like the Adeptus said. Mortal souls are not as robust as those of the Adepti. So as not to be harmed when dealing with the Adepti, you can start by practicing with that ghost. There is a calligraphy painting in the inn known as the Witness Sigil. It's been in circulation for over a thousand years. Go take a look at it. Once you have, look for a place outside where you can see the exact same Witness Sigil formation. There she is! So scary! Quick, you! You grab her! She's trying to get away! We have to follow her! If it's as the boss lady said, she won't disappear like last time! Uh, she doesn't know when to give up! This old decrepit ruin guard? Surely it's not... possessed! 
From whence you came. Silly Churl, Billy Churl. <sighs> Finally caught you. Paimon's pooped. Silly Billy, Billy Churl. Haunting things isn't nice. Uh, little girl, are you listening? Chilly Churl. Really, Churl. Now listen here, young lady. Oh, okay. Does Kimming won't tease the travelers at the inn anymore. Next time, you can come play with Dusky Ming. If you don't come and play, Dusky Ming will come find you. W what? You, you really got the ghost to promise to stop haunting the inn? <laughs> wow, you really are something. I am in your debt. Please, wait a moment. I'll make you the smoothest, silkiest bowl of almond tofu. <laughs> My hands are steadier than ever now that she's gone. You two, again. Wait, don't go disappearing again. What's this? It's your favorite, almond tofu, as well as this distant traveler's best dish, a satisfying salad. Quick, tell him everything before he finishes eating. Rex Lapis. How could this be? I... I can't imagine it. Though times have changed, I've never imagined a Liyue without him. The ruling Qixing. Just what role have they played in this? <sighs> I will seek Mooncarver, Mountain Shaper, and Cloud Retainer. It is time they too made their decisions. Adepti do not turn on their responsibilities. I have my reasons to not want to be tainted by the mortal realm, but... Responsibilities are responsibilities. Our god is the god of contracts, after all. Wait! Paimon still has one last question. Hmm? That... little mean... she's... When conquering demons, on occasion, you can come across spirits who have never hurt anyone, yet are also not yet able to be moved on. So I asked the innkeeper and the boss if they could keep her here for a time. So really... Wang Shuin was looking after her. Really keeping a wide range of business going, huh? Have mercy, almighty oh Adeptus. I beg you, show mercy upon me and my brother. Spare our lives. Who are you? What's going on? We asked you first. Oh. You enjoy safe passage in Joyun Karst. It can only mean one thing. You must be Adepti messengers, sent here to rescue me and my brother. What is he talking about? Oh, have mercy, mighty messengers of the illuminated Adepti. I beg you to save us. My brother and I, we only came here because our family is poor. And we heard tell of treasures hidden in the amber of Mount Hulao. It was stupid of us. But all we wanted to do was to find enough treasure to sell and support our family. We followed the path up the mountain, but suddenly, the amber that swallowed up my brother Li Dang. I ran away and made it this far before it dawned on me. We were trespassers in the abode of the Adepti. And this was our punishment. I had no idea how to rescue my brother, so I just started praying for the Adepti to have mercy, right here on the spot. And now, that long last, two messengers come to my aid. What? We're not Adepti messengers. We just want to find the Adepti like everyone else. No, 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 you, you must be messengers. You have to be. I have no idea which Amber trapped him. Please, you have to rescue him. I beg you, show me some Adepti mercy. 
Thanks be to the Adeptus of Mount Hulao and to their messengers. Never will we be so foolish again. Whoa, check you out! When you speak like that, you actually make a pretty convincing Adepti messenger. Kaima was gonna ask him about where to find the Adeptus, but he seems pretty one-track mind about rescuing his brother right now. Hmm... So, he said that Li Dang got trapped in amber somewhere on Mount Hulao, and that they were following the path the whole way up. So let's follow the path down from here, and make sure to be on the lookout for Amber on the way. Rescuing my brother, oh mighty messengers of the Illuminated Adepti. What? No. I mean, like everyone else, we've heard that there's an Adeptus living in Mount Hulao. But regular folks like us would never have the chance to meet them. No way. Unlike you guys, you're Adepti messengers. So it's a whole different story. Anyway, we have trespassed in the realm of the Adeptus for long enough. We should get going. Thank you, mighty Adepti messengers. Yes. Boy, it'd be super helpful if we actually were Adepti messengers. Cause it seems like this Adeptus has got a real temper problem. But it's not like we've done anything wrong, so... Oh. Who dares trespass on my mountain? <laughs> Foolish mortal. Come forth and receive your punishment. You intrude upon the sanctity of Mount Hulao. You destroy the amber of my mountain. And you free a thief whose freedom is not yours to give. The thief's ignorance was an affront to the Adepti. But your actions are an abomination of the highest order! Wait! We can explain! Mooncarver? Trusted a mere mortal as his messenger? Is this a sigil of permission? One is surprised to find such things still exist in the mortal realm. In the beginning, Rex Lapis cast them for the mortals with his own hand. Few were made then, and thousands of years on, fewer still remain. Speak. One shall listen to the matter which brings you here. Then one shall verify the truth thereof. You would be wise to speak the truth, for Liyue is not so far from here that one would be easily deceived. Rex Lapis. Assassinated? At the right of dissension? What mortal in Liyue, nay, in all the world, would conspire to commit such foul treason? Or perhaps the more pertinent question is, what power in this world could aspire to achieve it? Rex Lapis charged the Adepti with the protection of Liyue, and we have always honored this duty. As the people have prospered, so have we gradually withdrawn into the mountains. Indeed, this was a gesture of goodwill towards humanity. But now, alas, Rex Lapis, gone. Traveler, of the matter you have relayed, one has become aware. One now knows why Moon Carver has sent for us. Once one has dealt with certain matters here that require my attention, one shall convene with the other Adepti. Paimon can! Adepti always have magical powers in storybooks. Seems it's true in real life too. You know, like how grass is actually Adepti hair, and rivers are actually Adepti saliva. There must be something similar going on with the Amber. Your nonsense knows no bounds. 
This amber is produced by a flower that one has planted here, called the Karst Crawler. The majority of the plant is hidden underground. When stepped on, it produces amber to trap the invader. After taking up residence here, one planted many karst crawlers to ensure that the tranquility of the mountain would remain undisturbed. Over the years, they have helped to prevent many disturbances. But in the process, they have also trapped many curious things. Oh, so the amber is alive? Correct. Thus, one may not leave this place in its current state for fear of the risk to innocent lives in one's absence. One will depart as soon as one has attended to this matter. One trusts that the manner of your departure will be swifter in nature. Hey, who put this table here? They've even set it ready for dinner. There's a wine jug and everything. Oh, they even have the guest names carved into the seats. Here sits Retainer. Here sits Guizhong. Here sits Rex. Maybe Rex is short for Rex Lapis. But Paimon has... As for Retainer... Hmm... <gasps> That's it! When Moon Carver was going through the names of his Adepti buddies, he said there was one called Cloud Retainer. So this must be where Cloud Retainer and the other Adepti have their dinner parties. <laughs> How about we cook up some extra special dishes for the Adepti? We're sure to get Cloud Retainer's attention that way. But what do Adepti even eat anyway? Paimon has no idea. Hmm. People must make offerings here all the time. Guess all we can do is look around the area for any leftovers. Maybe that'll give us some ideas. Um, do you think maybe it's at all possible that the Adepti might like to try some sticky honey roast? One senses the presence of a sigil of permission. One knows not why you have come, though the sincerity of your offering is clear. Hence, you shall be granted an opportunity. Find your way through mine abode, and you shall receive an audience with the Adeptus whom you seek. One is most impressed. The path that leads through this abode defies those of ordinary abilities. The one before you is the Adeptus Cloud Retainer. Now speak of the matter which brings you here. You surmise correctly. This place did oneself build, as did one design the mechanisms within. In fact, even Gui Zhang and Rex Lapis themselves found one's technological accomplishments to be worthy of commendation. This place is huge, and there are so many mechanisms! Do you really have this whole place to yourself? What's it even for? Did you build it as your private mechanism workshop or something? It's just like the stories say. The Adepti leave the human world, find somewhere to go be a hermit, and then they research and invent all these amazing things! One is simply not partial to the tedium of social interaction, and wish to find some peace and quiet. Find it one did. Shortly after which, you arrived bearing your sigil of permission. But enough. State the matter which brings you here at once. You have disturbed the tranquility of this place for long enough. Rex Lapis. Assassinated? How can this be? Such a heinous crime! Who would dare? A notion is so preposterous as to be unbelievable! 
One shall have to verify the truth of the matter independently. Perhaps one shall quash Liyue first, then convene with the other Adepti. Wait, what? Did you just say squash Liyue Harbor? Are you seriously going to wipe out the whole city? Only a response of sufficient magnitude can negate the possibility of further incidents. It is as you say. But if Rex Lapis has indeed been murdered, then Liyue is in great peril. To delay in quashing the threat is to invite further disaster. It is precisely because one does not wish to see further suffering that exceptional measures are deemed necessary at this exceptional time. Yikes! Quick, you gotta think of something! She wants to squash Liyue flat! And it doesn't seem like she's bluffing! Exactly what Paima was gonna say. We made all that delicious food and gave every last bit of it to you. We were hoping you might help Liyue out, not wipe Liyue out. Or at least let's, you know, discuss it first. Can't hurt for you to get a second opinion. Contract? A cruel irony that you should appeal to the notion after the merciless murder of the God of Contracts himself. The people of Liyue seem quite content to dispense with their contracts. They are quite adept at taking that which is composed of black and white and turning it gray. Nevertheless, since you come here in the name of contracts, far be it from one to abandon one's own contractual obligations. Least of all when you come bearing a sigil of permission. Rex Lapis infused these sigils with adeptal power when he first cast them. That power once aided humans in battle. Most of the sigil's power has long since worn off. It is but a keepsake now. This keepsake cannot be taken as proof of your trustworthiness. One must investigate the claims that you make independently. This, no doubt, is Mooncarver's very reason for summoning us. Your audience with the Adeptus before you is now concluded. Leave at once. I see. Huh. Moon Carver, Mountain Shaper, Cloud Retainer, Conqueror of Demons. Some of these names have never come up in the intel the Fatui gets hold of. As a returning gift, I too have information for you. Regarding the Archon's passing, the Liyue Chising's response really has given me food for thought. They've announced that, as the true killer has not yet been found, they are not allowing anyone to pay their respects to the Exuvia. They've even gone so far as to try and cut off information. But with the right of dissension and all, even the Chising isn't able to keep a lid on things. Exuvia? It's common knowledge in Liyue that Rex Lapis is also an Adeptus. The Geo Archon is also the god of contracts, and is also known as the Exuvia, prime of the Adepti. The mighty and illuminated Adepti of today all signed contracts to protect Liyue way back then. Guess that explains why they're all so focused on Liyue's well-being. Naturally, they both have the responsibility and the aptitude for the job. If the ruling Qixing became unable to perform their duty properly, the Adepti have the right to take corrective action. The Geo Archon's spirit has risen, so why would the Qixing hide his vessel? Truly. Oh, right! He's the whole reason we came here! If the Liyue Qixing has locked up Exuvia and won't let anyone near... ...then our quest to find the Seven is already over! Oh? You're trying to find the Seven? And just why might that be, pray tell? <laughs> nice answer. A knight that gets duped by the Fatui would really be no knight at all now, would they? But, I can help you with that too, you know. Hmm, really? Give me some time. Time to find someone. Someone who can help you break through this stalemate. Huh. <laughs> Truly fascinating. The harder they try to silence the situation, the greater the chaos that erupts. <laughs> if you want to be around to see it all come crashing down, best you stay alive until we next meet, yes?
After having experienced the land of the absentee Archon, Traveler, how does it feel to know that our Archon and Adepti are here all around you in Liyue? Indeed, the weight of 3,700 years worth of history runs deepest in the true divinity of Liyue. Organizing the rite of parting should prove to be an enlightening part of your travels. Liyue is the most prosperous of the Seven Nations, defended by deities and ruled by the Qixing. As such, the diplomatic maneuverings of the Fatui have gained no purchase here. Ningguang of the Qixing has always been on her guard against the Fatui. That is in all likelihood why Child wants to make use of the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor's connections. Huh. What would Child get out of us doing the rite of parting anyway? I neither know nor do I wish to know. As far as I am concerned, the Fatui are merely financial sponsors. I only wish for Liyue's traditions to endure. These are the advanced funds that Child has provided. If you use them up, you can go to him to apply for any subsequent funding. Wow! Well then, let us be off. The first step in our preparations shall be to obtain some prize Noctilucus Jade worthy of a deity. Welcome to the Jade Mystery, my good friends. Would you like to try your luck betting on Jade? This could be your lucky day. It's cheap and it's fun, and who knows, you just might strike it rich. Betting? No, no, we're here for... Um... What was it again? Noctilucus Jade, of Radiant Grade at the very least. Radiant grade, Noctilucus Jade? I see. You're not a tourist. My apologies. I have some here for your perusal. What do you think? The Jade Mystery is an old name in the Jade business. Just look at that wonderful quality. Rex Lapis doesn't often bless us with such finery. Go on, pick whichever one you like. These three pieces really do look pretty. Not like the ones you usually dig up. But how do we pick? Should we just grab one and go? Oh? You want me to decide? That is fine as well. If it were me, the answer would be simple. Oh? And that would be... I'll take them all, boss. Oh, you act with such panache, good sir. I always knew you were not a man of ordinary caliber. Oh, wait, wait, boss! That one didn't count! We need to discuss it again! Hey! If we only need one for the ritual, are we wasting three times the Mora if we buy them all? Oh, Mora. Hmm. It is as you say. I suppose I overlooked this particular aspect of the transaction. Huh? How do you not think about Mora when buying things? If one must always consider Mora before acting, then in all things one is bound by Mora. Uh, what? All Mora is currency, but not all currency is Mora. What? Is this how the rich live? Well, he knows a lot about big money, but not a lot about big savings. No need to waver. Even when I am constrained by Mora, I have ways of working around my limitations. Evaluating the quality of Noctilucus Jade is indeed very tricky. Only after the item made using Noctilucus Jade has taken shape will you be able to see whether it is up to par or not. If you return to those crafty merchants to quibble, they will counter by saying that your crafting bench is to blame, or that your heat control was poor. Whoa! To think it's that easy to get cheated! But there is a way to truly evaluate this jade, and a true insider would know it. 
A fool sees the pointer and misses the moon. What does that mean? If you point at the moon with your finger, a wise man knows that you are pointing at the moon, while a fool will only see the finger. The patterns, the facade, these are all the finger. Noctilucus Jade is a mystical stone used to light up the darkness, and so its brightness is the important thing. It is the moon. Noctilucus Jade of excellent quality would have superior pyro affinity. In other words, the bluer and brighter the luster of the ore under high temperature, the higher its quality. I have imparted the priceless secrets of the Jade trade to you. Now, all that's left is to put it into practice. Priceless, huh? Hyman's just said that we might never be able to use it again. We're back to buy some rocks, boss. But can you let us burn them first? Uh, burn them? You can't do that, my friends. If you were to do so, what would I have to sell? That would... well... fine. As you wish, then. How about this? I can take a small sample of all three. I'll take a bit of a loss. Uh, we'll count it as a friendly gesture. <laughs> Don't worry. I know the rules. As long as we can prove that it is good jade, you will not take a loss. All right, take these as samples. I've carved them off with a knife and tagged them to boot. Aren't these too thin? Even paper's thicker. No, even a bug's wings are thicker. These are almost see-through. <laughs> oh, you flatter me, but I have to be gentle with these rocks. They are my pride and joy. If I'd taken off even a bit more, it, it would have killed me. But wouldn't something this thin go poof if we held it to the fire? It can't be helped. Trying to deprive a merchant of his profits would be like forcing a ravenous wolf to vomit up the food in its stomach. Nonetheless, under the right conditions, these thin slices will serve. What sort of conditions? While we add the high temperatures using pyro, we can use hydro to reinforce it from within. This way, the samples will not disintegrate immediately. Oh! Oh, sir, to think you were this learned. Thank you for your understanding. Strictly speaking, asking for samples when we have not yet agreed to purchase the goods is unfair. Trade in Liyue must be based upon fairness. Well, guess we just need to find a place to try this out. You mean at Wanmin Restaurant? Uh, as long as we do it when she's not in. That would not do. It is a place where people come and go. They would be endangered if the elemental reaction were to get out of control. We cannot take such a risk. Oh, Paima remembers we once saw this big pot down at the Data Upa Gorge in the camp of the hilly churls from the Meaty Tribe. It's real sturdy and should be able to take the elemental reactions. Now, let's pack those samples up and make a move. <laughs> That's the pot! It looks like the hilly trolls are still using it. It's a bit of light, but we can run! Very quick. I'm By royal de- Barbados! Yeah. Oh! That's bright! Too bright! <sighs> that was the third knock to Lucas Jade, wasn't it? It was so much shinier than the rest. Let's go with that one. Let's head back to the Jade Mystery to buy some jade, shall we? Back, my friends. I've kept the goods for you. Which of them would you like? Exactly! That's the one Paimon remembers, too! No problem. If you have your eye on this one, you can have it. 
Then we'll take a box of the third type of jade. Done. All the same, uh, pardon me for asking, but I'm curious. Whatever do you need this much top quality Noctilucus jade for? Hmm. I suppose it would not hurt to tell you. We need them to make implements for the rite of parting. Parting? Oh, dear. I I'd heard the rumors, but had given much thought to them. This... This means that Rex Lapis really is... Oh, it's hard to believe. Even though the Jade Mystery has been in decline, we have always been under his protection. It is said that when our Lord lost his way while going incognito in the city 200 years ago, it was a spoon from the Jade Mystery that he had used to sample the local delights. Alas, alas, all things must pass. <sighs> well, if this is to be used to say farewell to Rex Lapis, then I shall sell this to you at half the price. Are you sure? You didn't want to even give us an inch before. If not for our Lord's protection, this city wouldn't exist as it does now. No proprietor could earn money off such a thing. Oh, I'm sure Rex Lapis will feel your sentiment, boss. In the safe hands of the Liu Achising and good honest merchants such as yourself, I for one believe that Liu Er will continue to prosper as it always has done. All right. Thank you, my friends. What's with me getting all sentimental like this? I'll practically be giving away all my fortune at this rate. Now that we've made our choice, let's take this Noctilucus Jade back. Hey, wait a minute. He said it was half price, not that we could leave without paying. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I must have forgotten to do that, too. Let me see. As I thought, I didn't bring any. Any what? Mora. My apologies. Another oversight on my part. Oh, that won't do. This isn't some small sum. Oh, wait. Didn't Child give us some advanced funds earlier? <sighs> That's a relief. Have a look. It's fine. Just enough for half price. <laughs> Though, to be honest, it'd be all right even if the sum wasn't quite enough. Well... It's settled, then. Let's take this jade to Yujing Terrace. That's where we plan to hold the right. Look at you bossing everyone around. You didn't cough up a single Mora. <laughs> I will do my best. You have my thanks. <sighs> we can leave the jade here. I have already called for a jewelsmith to shape them into the implements that we will need. Ah, yes. I have yet to go and see Child. So, as for the jewelsmith's remuneration... Guess we can't do anything else. Also, is this where we're doing the rite of parting? Yes. I have already rented this location, and have begun making preparations for the rite. That's right. The Liu and Qixing have acquiesced to using the same location. But when something this big happened here, should suspects like us really be at the crime scene? We might get caught by the Millilith. Although with that said, since we got back from Dwayne Karst, none of those pesky Millilith soldiers have come chasing after us. Wonder what that's about. Also, the, uh, Rex Lapis vessel... Traditionally, we call it the Exuvia. Ah, right! That's what it was called. You seem to know everything, Mr. Zhongli. Um, so, was this Exuvia hidden away by the Qixing? I mean, we haven't even figured out who the murderer is. One must think that they already have someone in mind. Or perhaps they already know. Surely they must have found all the evidence that there is to find here. These things are for the authorities in Yujing Terrace to consider. Trying to help would probably only add to their troubles. Before the rite is conducted, the Exuvia will be kept temporarily in the Golden House. Golden House? The only mint in Liu, which is to say the only mint into that. 
All the mora that flows throughout the world is minted there. Oh, no! Paimon wasn't thinking about anything bad. Paimon thinks it suits Morax. But why do you know this, Mr. Zhongli? Since the rite of parting has the approval of the Qixing, it is a semi-official event. As such, there is already some limited information available. Perhaps each has their motives. But this is the capital of commerce. A little exploitation once in a while is not unacceptable. In Liyue, where the god of contracts reigns, only contracts may not be betrayed. I for one have no issue with little maneuvers outside their remit. Well then, we should go and prepare the perfumes used in the rite. Perfumes? Where'll we get those? Do we buy them? No. Perfumes used to honor the gods must be freshly decocted. The quality of the silk flowers we require is also special. Silk flower petals contain a fibrous material of good quality, often used in brocade making. Its scent, however, is most elegant, and is especially suited for solemn events, like giving offerings to gods and adepti. It's time for Zhang Li's lectures on high society again! <laughs> We shall not speak of the details right now. Follow me. We shall go to the merchants to purchase our ingredients. Plus, do you sell silk flowers here? Silk flowers? We certainly do. Which kind would you like? Which kind? The, uh, the good kind? The best kind? Remind Paima what kinds there are again. Ugh, you ignorant shoppers. Always coming in here with your stupid questions. Golden Housemaiden, Valley Weaver, and Fate's Yearning. One of each to start with, if you don't mind. My goodness, this gentleman is quite the connoisseur. You two must be his servants. Uh, please refrain from any further attempts to contribute. I'm sorry. Ah, yes. We've met before, haven't we? Sorry, Traveler. I shouldn't have spoken to you in that tone. Now then, please peruse at your leisure. Do let me know if you have any further thoughts. Silk flowers exhibit different properties based on how their environmental conditions differ from their ancestral habitat. Nevertheless, these are fine specimens. Excellently preserved. Just look at the abundant foliage here, and these stamens, glamorous as a maiden of the Golden House. This strip, by contrast, this variety thrives in any dark, damp location, often in large clusters. Morphologically, it is distinguished by the profusion of petals and densely packed stamens, though its powerful scent gives it away just as easily. Lastly, this strain is quite the recluse. Unlike its exuberant cousins, flowers and foliage are minimal, and when in season, it has a subtle yet enduring scent. It was first discovered by the ancients when they scaled the mountains in search of the Adepti. Silk flowers have all but disappeared from the wild today due to geographical changes over Liu's history. Most are not grown by horticulturalists. Wow! A true connoisseur! Most of that was news even to me! I possess but a smattering of trivial knowledge. My traveler friend is the one to watch. They are on track to set foot in every corner of the world. Oh, Mr. Zhongli, you're way too humble. So which silk flower did you want anyway? I'll take them all, boss. Again? How can I put this? When purchasing opera tickets, it is natural to decide based on which singer has the most melodious voice. The same logic applies when purchasing a pet bird. But this silk flower purchase is not an analogous case. The same logic does not apply. Perhaps you don't know. Tradition states that we should decoct perfume from different subspecies of silk flower when making an offering to a statue of the Seven. Rex Lapis will then make his own choice between the scents. 
Like several other tedious and complicated traditions, this one has become simplified over time. But this is the only rite of parting to take place for one of the seven in 3,700 years. As such, I do think we should honor tradition down to the last detail in this case. Now that's settled, a question. <clears throat> do you have any mora on you? You forgot to bring money again? Song <sighs> Lee? Uh, if I may interject, did I hear you say that these flowers are to be an offering to the Lord of Geo himself? Yes, in a sense. Gosh, well, why didn't you say so? I heard the awful news about what happened at this year's Rite of Dissension. It would be bad luck to say it out loud, but I've been worried about our dear Lord ever since. I'm worried that everything I've heard is true. Since these flowers will be used to glorify our Lord, they're free of charge. Just don't forget to pass on my regards. Are you serious? Why wouldn't I be? I would be nobody if not for Rex Lapis. If he hadn't written those poems in praise of my wares, they'd only be worth a fraction of what I can sell them for today. Huh. So much folklore here revolves around Liyue's deity making cameo appearances in support of local businesses. Thank you, boss. I think I speak for all of us when I say that your generosity has saved our skins. Our skins? You were the one who forgot to bring money! Please, it's the least I could do. Can't beat the atmosphere here. So, now that we've got the flowers, how do we make the perfume? Ideally, with the help of an expert. Unfortunately, none of my acquaintances have personal experience in the art of decoction. Talk about first world problems. Hence, I need you to help by asking around in the city. Try the common folk. Especially women. So this time we get to go around town looking for nice smelling ladies to talk to? Paimon likes this job. I will wait for you near the Statue of the Seven. Meet me there when the perfume is ready. Maybe we can find some good candidates at the Adventurer's Guild. <gasps> Let's ask Lan! She's master of the Leeway branch, right? Lan, we need to ask you for a favor. I stopped accepting commissions a long time ago. Sorry, you two, but you'll just have to ask another adventurer. Oh, it's not that kind of favor. It's just a teeny tiny thing. <laughs> wow. Just wow. Do I look like the kind of girl who wears perfume to you? I think you're underestimating the kind of person I am. Well, Paimon thinks you smell amazing. So come on, Lon. What's your secret if not perfume? Now that you mention it, yes, there is something. What is that scent? Oh, it must be from the Qingxing flowers I picked on the way back. I forgot I still had them with me. Aha! The truth is out. Lon's got a soft spot for wildflowers. Uh, no. They were for medicinal use only. Anyway, this is a pointless conversation. If you want to know about perfume, try talking to Chi Ming. The fortune teller, right? Paimon remembers she smells pretty good. Thanks, Lon. See you around. Hello. How may I help? We've come to ask you a question. Perfume? I rarely think to use it, let alone about how to make it myself. That said, some of the cosmetics I use are scented. Perhaps that's the cause of this confusion. Since I usually set up my stall by the docks, I avoid perfume like the plague, because Celestia forbid those lusty sailors catch a whiff and come hunting for the source. That's the worst thing Paimon's heard all day. 
While we're on the subject, have you never heard anyone mention Ying Ar's homemade perfume? Ying Air? Oh, as in scent of spring, Ying Air? Yes, that's her. Many a rich family's daughter has gotten her to make perfume for them. Apparently, her homemade product is better than anything you'll find on the market. Great! This is just the intel we need! Finally, we're getting somewhere! Well, hello. You found me at last. I've been waiting for you. What? How did you know we were coming? Oh, I heard a rumor about a couple who were snooping around town looking for a sweet-smelling lady. Actually, I was starting to worry you wouldn't find me. This is the ultimate test of my appeal, after all. Snooping around? Why are you making it out like we're bad people? What can I say? People love to talk. Maybe you ought to be more discreet in the future if you don't want word to get around. Relax. I know why you're here. You want to get your hand on my homemade perfume, don't you? What kind would you like? Three in one go. My goodness. You have extreme tastes for someone your age. Maybe the rumors I heard were true after all. You're on the prowl and need some sweet-smelling ammunition. Is that it? Is that the best you could come up with? Even if you were genuinely offering perfume to a deity, that doesn't explain why you'd need three kinds. Sorry, your story just doesn't hold water. Zhang Li was right. People don't remember this tradition anymore. As one of my favorite poems goes, O oh, cherry tree, begrudge not thy blossoms as they are deflowered in the spring, for come winter, even thy sturdiest wood shall wither. That went over Paimon's head a little. <laughs> in short, I'm happy to help. Traveler, you can be my assistant, but you'd better make sure I'm the only person on your mind while you're hanging around with me. So, where is a good place for making sweet, sweet perfume? You mean Wan Mean Restaurant? Good choice. Let's go. Wow. Really got I've had a word with Chef Mao. We can start work now. Are you ready to please me? What did you say? I meant make me proud, as my assistant, obviously. While I'm setting up, you can go and fetch some water. This water will do nicely. Now, I need you to extract the silk flower essence using a crafting bench. Perfume making uses an altogether different technique from alchemy. Here, let me teach you. You need to keep your wrist firm so your hand doesn't slip. Now, use your strong hand to stir it with a persistent rhythm. Keep going until the juices start to come out. Ooh, you're a natural, like a fish to water. Now, take these and try it out on your own using a nearby crafting bench. Don't forget to do all three. They look visually identical during the essence extraction process but I will put them into separate containers when the perfume is ready. Wow, this is some exquisite silk flower essence. On to the next stage, the most important one of all. 
The essence is placed into water and simmered over a low heat until most of the water has boiled off. You must take care to control the heat during this process. If the temperature goes too high, it will affect the scent. So please focus on controlling the heat. This is the final step. Don't waste a drop of that essence now. We want all of it in there. All three perfumes are ready, and you, my friend, were a wonderful assistant. A testament to the lengths you will go to for romance. It's so rare to see nowadays. Wow, you actually remembered my throwaway comment. You know... You're cuter than people give you credit for. If I didn't have my guard up, I can see how easily one could be taken in. Anyway, shall I give you a brief overview of each scent? It might just help you match the right scent to the right occasion. Paima wants to hear this. This first one is sweet as candy, straight out of a fairy tale. Younger women will love it. The second one is for those with more refined tastes, the first choice for daughters of high society. Finally, the third one has a soft but lingering scent, like a mist that captures the last light of dusk. Mature women adore this one. All clear? Don't get them mixed up now. You'll ruin the mood. Good. Be sure to come visit if you ever need help with anything, okay? I'll leave you with some parting words. One who tries to sail three boats simultaneously should be careful not to go overboard. <laughs> Come and hang out with me at Scent of Spring sometime, okay? Let's take these three perfumes over to the Statue of the Seven. Mr. Shunley's probably been waiting a while. We've brought the perfumes, Mr. Zhongli. Did we take too long? You were just staring up at the statue. Hmm. Uh, oh, you're back. Don't worry, I haven't waited long. Compared to the watch that Rex Lapis's statues have kept over Liu, this was but a brief moment. <laughs> well, how can a person compete with a statue? That is true. Well... Have you brought the perfumes? Three sets, and not one less. <sighs> Thank you both. Let us offer them up. This is the first kind of perfume. Miss Yinger said that it's sweet as a dream, and it's liked by younger ladies. This is the second kind. It's got an elegant smell, and the daughters of high society love it. The third kind has a gentle but lingering fragrance. Something, something like the dusk mist. And it's a favorite of mature ladies. Oh, what was that? That's the one older ladies like, right? Does that mean that Rex Lapis is actually an older lady? <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. Rex Lapis has taken on countless forms. Perhaps that really was one of them. What a shame. We only got to see the giant dragon form, and... <sighs> Let's hope the Chi Sing can catch the real killer. We can leave that to the authorities. Let us folk... So, we finished another step in our preparations. What's next? Next, I would like the two of you to help me borrow the cleansing bell. Cleansing bell? At present, a friend of mine named Madame Ping is the guardian of the cleansing bell. She lives near Yujing Terrace. If you ask her, she will know what to do. Sure, but aren't you going to come with us? Ah, I have certain reasons why I cannot be there in person. Please, do this for me. Man, why is he gotta be so secretive this time? <sighs> All things must change. 
Uh, it's nothing. It's nothing. I just thought it a great shame that so many of these glazed lilies have wilted. What happened to them? Back in my day, people said that glazed lilies can read human hearts. If they heard beautiful sounds like laughter and singing, they would also bloom joyfully. But if they heard too much wild gossip or slander, they would quickly wither away. So that means these flowers feel what's happening in Lila? Yes, the rumors of Rex Lapis's death are no small matter. They are everywhere. Some say it was a Fatui plot. Others say that the Chising made it all up. And still others think that that which lies in the deep is breaking free. This harbor is like a mountain of dry tinder. Well, I shall say no more. This old woman's grown too old and naggy. Did you have something to say, youngster? Ah, that old trinket. <laughs> I remember it being here with me, but I've grown old. <laughs> I can't quite recall where it is exactly. An old friend of mine used to wear it on his person. Back when I was young, he saw me gazing at it often and gave it to me. But he told me then that if someone should come to borrow that bell, I should not be loath to part with it. It has been many years, and who knows how many times someone has come to borrow this bell. Still, though, I can't recall when it started. It's been a long time since anyone has come to borrow it. Oh, these old bones are so slow to look for things. I doubt you can wait that long. What a weird thing to be proud of. All right, children. There is no need to worry. I didn't place the bell very far away. Eh? Uh, do you live near here, Granny? Whoa, but this is Eugene Terrace. It's gotta be expensive. Oh, an old lady like me can't afford to buy a place in this city. See this ceramic teapot? My entire household is in here. How does that work? What? There's no way Paimon would fit in there. And why do you need Paimon to go in anyway? Can't you just lift the lid and look inside? Oh, youngsters. I simply mean that the bell is somewhere inside this teapot, and you are quite welcome to borrow it. If you can find it. This granny is so weird. What does she mean her whole household is in here? Is she playing with us? Just happened. Youngsters, this is where this old woman keeps all her things. Quickly now, go fetch that bell. Whoa! That sounds like Granny's voice. So, this is her teapot? What's going on? Oh dear, so many cobwebs. <laughs> it seems I really haven't cleaned it in a long while. Sorry to trouble you, children. Please help an old lady clean up. Oh, you found it. <laughs> Youngsters are so quick on their feet. Oh, now, let me see. How did this opening work again? Oh, dear. All right, that'll do. <laughs> Come on out now, children. Oh, in and out in no time. You youngsters really are quick. An adeptus. Oh, 
I haven't heard anyone say those words in earnest for a long time. As to whether I am one or not, child, surely you already understand. Ah, Hyman kind of knows what you mean, but is also kind of confused. Are you really giving us the bell just like that, Granny? Don't you think it's weird? Something's just happened to Rex Lapis, and then we come running up asking for it? Oh, don't be silly. Leoa Harbor has been through a great deal in its history. In that time, it has seen the departure of countless Adepti. But no matter what, we have always performed the rite of parting first before any other matters. To cry, catch the murderer at the top of one's lungs, but ignore the rite of parting. That, to me, is what is wrong-headed. Now that you have come to borrow the bell, I guess that perhaps an old friend of mine has finally decided to take matters into their own hands. So, why would I be unwilling to lend you the bell? Hey! It belongs to Granny! We're supposed to return what we borrow! Oh, let you keep it. <laughs> you really are a frank child. If you want it, you can keep it. But this bell gets homesick sometimes. Who knows? It might find its way back into these old hands. Well, you must have things to do. Since you have the bell, you should return. Oh, and do tell the person who sent you that if they have time, they can come over for tea. I don't have much to offer, but you can always count on an old lady for a pot of tea. We will. Thanks, Granny. Indeed, this is the cleansing bell. Hmm. It's in good condition. Let's place the perfume we've prepared inside. An adeptus. That's suspicious. But if you don't want to talk about it, we won't pry. Oh, yes, that old granny asked us to tell you something. If you have the time, you can come over for tea. I don't have much to offer, but you can always count on an old lady for a pot of tea. <laughs> that tone does not suit you. Still, her teapot is indeed very good. There are none better for brewing tea. When a suitable time arrives, I'll bring a spot of fine tea and pay her a visit. So what's the next step in our preparations? Hmm. Next, we need to purchase kites. Ooh, Paimon loves kites! Are you taking us kite flying? Is this our break time? <laughs> no, no. Kites are children's toys, yes. But they also play various symbolic roles in Liyue's rituals. I will explain it to you. But our next course of action should probably be to purchase the kites first. Oh, sure. Curiouser and curiouser. The seven kites you asked for have been made to order. Would you like to take them now? Yes, thank you. It's rare to see customers who want to buy this type of kite nowadays. In the early days, we used to get orders from people of all walks of life. Well, this is Mr. Zhang Li from the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor, so he's probably well-versed in all these walks of life. We've talked about a whole bunch of things while traveling with him. He seems to know Liyue's favorite topics, money and government, really well. But he likes talking about less useful topics instead. Well, that's because I prefer to share fun things with you. <laughs> Children's toys are very fun things, that's for sure. I enjoy watching the children at play as much as anyone else. But there is more to it than that. Finely crafted toys are well loved by children, but this craft itself has been honed over thousands of years, and there is meaning behind that. 
I have made kites in Liyue for 40 years, and I am intimately familiar with the forms passed down from my ancestors. The meaning of these seven kites is far from banal. Indeed. These are decorations used in the rite of parting. The seven kites represent the seven. I took the liberty of coloring outside the lines when doing the insignia of the Animo Archon. As for the kite that honors the Geo Archon, one must follow the contract given right down to the last letter. These patterns are ancient, and you can also find them in the Golden House. Ah, Paimon's heard that name before! Huh? The design of this kite displays a firm grasp on the cyclicality and eternity so dear to the Electro Archon. These markings of tree and leaf pay due honor to wisdom and the passage of time. All this on a single kite. Truly astonishing. Justice flows across the surface of the waters. War rages like a flame. As does that which the Cryo Archon once. <sighs> yes. These details are masterfully done. <laughs> The compliments of a learned man truly are pleasant. Well then, Granny Shen, I shall take these back with me. As for the... Well, allow me. Hey, it's Child! <laughs> no, I was merely passing through. I see Mr. Zhang Li's the same as ever. When paying, well, when getting others to pay for him, he neither looks at the price tag nor his wallet. He knows a great deal about money, and about the trials of the common man. He just doesn't consider poverty to be something that could ever happen to him. Or perhaps, you could say that he cannot imagine himself lacking money. How has he not died of hunger yet? <laughs> Child, you are as fond of jokes as ever. Well then, since we've purchased our kites without incident, there's no need to take a break before moving to the next step in our preparations. The rite of parting requires helping hands as well as materials. We should be able to find some people near the harbor. Oh, by the way, take this bag of money. You probably won't want to let Zhang Li do the bargaining, if you know what I mean. Hmm. Seems I missed out on some interesting information. I suppose I'll just have to find a more opportune moment next time. Hiring help? Sure. But let me just say first that I'm a reserve member of the Adventurer's Guild. I take adventuring commissions, but I don't do anything clerical. Adventure? Venturing into the mountains to capture a few crystal flies seems adventurous enough. Eh? That's not hard. Almost a bit too easy for a reserve adventurer. Nah, never mind. I'll only charge you 15,000, Mora. What say you? A most fair price. Five Geo Crystal Flies. Yes, I do think it's worth about this much. I'll do it. We have odd jobs at Yujing Terrace. Hmm. No problem. 25,000 per day. A fair trade, yes? Whoa, that's expensive. Um, could you give us a bit of a discount on account of the whole Hero of Mondstadt thing? Hero of Mondstadt? Never heard of them. Well, you may never have heard of this hero, but it seems you've heard of Mora nonetheless. Thus, I will simply pay the whole sum. This price will do. No loss to me for a day's work. Oh, help? Sure. I, Tick, always put in 100% effort into everything I do. Of course, there'll be a premium if you want me to give 110%. So what's the job? Let me see. We are still missing some wooden implements over at Yujing Terrace. They aren't uncommon objects, so I didn't make any special preparations for them. No problem. That'll be 20,000 Mora for a single trip. How does that sound? Done.
Let me think. Deal. This price is reasonable. I'll hop right to it. All finished then? Splendid. Any leftover cash is yours to keep. A favor for the Fatui should never go unrewarded. You think you can buy us off with some loose change? No way! Paimon demands to know when the next payment is coming! <laughs> well, how does this sound? You give me the information I need, and maybe I'll leave the Northland Bank's vaults open and unattended for half an hour. What info do you need? Huh. Does that mean you know what he's after? Yikes! You're right! Signora! <laughs> you both need to calm down. I don't know what's gotten into you. Just what is this about? The atmosphere got so tense all of a sudden. <laughs> Next, we need some everlasting incense. For this, we need to go to Boo Boo Pharmacy, the finest pharmacy in all of... Is... everything okay? Everything is fine. I was just informing them that they need not return the surplus mora. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must be going. Paimon definitely felt like Child wasn't happy with us just now. Huh. The reception is deserted. And it seems kind of spooky in here. Hello? Is anybody there? Welcome to Boo Boo Pharmacy. Huh? D did you hear that? Where did it come from? The reception, it seems. How about you go check it out and Paimon will bring up the rear. Anyway, there's something weird about this one over here. What's the talisman doing on her forehead? It can't be. She's... a zombie! Welcome to Boo Boo Pharmacy. I am Chi Chi. Once upon a time, Chi Chi died. Then, Chi Chi was saved by the Adepti. Now, Chi Chi is a zombie. Something like this would be unimaginable in Mondstadt. Uh, hello, little girl. Do you sell everlasting incense here? Excuse me, sir. Did you bring your prescription? I... Surely no prescription is needed to purchase everlasting incense. It's not... Chi-Chi can get your medicine. But only if you show Chi-Chi your prescription. These are Chi-Chi's orders from Chi-Chi. Zombies are limited to acting within the confines of their orders. And somehow in this case, the zombie issues her own orders to herself. My dear Chi-Chi, we didn't bring a prescription, I'm afraid. But we do hope that you can still help us find some everlasting incense. Okay then. How did you manage that? But... Chi Chi helps you. You help Chi Chi. Only fair. Since when do customers need to do favors for customer service staff? Never mind. Just think of it as a peer to peer transaction. That way everybody wins. Sometimes in Liyue, the art of the deal is simply about victory via mental gymnastics. Go to Mount Tianhong. Find the Guizhong Ballista and hunt a cocoa goat. Please and thank you. I don't believe so. The Guizhong Ballista, at least, I have heard of before. It's a kind of crossbow turret, installed on Mount Chinhung by an adeptus in the distant past. An early mechanical device. 
Located in Chenhung Pass, it was designed to automatically fire at large monsters, protecting Liyue from external threats. Mr. Zhang Li really knows Liyue inside out. Apparently not quite. This is the first I have ever heard of the Coco Goat. The Coco Goat is a legendary animal, an adept beast. Did you want to add anything else, or...? No, just that the Coco Goat is a legendary animal, an adept beast. What it looks like, don't know. Where to find it, don't know either. Where it came from, also don't know. Very well then. Let's start by investigating near the Guizhong Ballista. Perhaps we will find some clues. <sighs> what the heck is a coca goat? Coco goat. Go find it. It's huge! Paimon can totally believe it took an adeptus to build this. But how do you operate this thing? Just think how much strength you would need. Hmm. It is currently inoperable in any case. This device is broken. Aw, oh, what? It broke? After millennia of wear and tear, even Adepti contraptions are difficult to maintain. So what are we gonna do? Quick, Mr. Zhongli, use your unlimited high society knowledge powers! Hmm. You almost make it sound like I'm some sort of bourgeois parasite whose only utility lies in providing quaint pieces of trivia on demand. That said, let me think for a moment. Ah, yes. Spare parts were made for the Guizhong Ballista when it was first built, in case it was damaged in battle. As I recall, there is a military supply post from that period somewhere inside the pass. If we can retrieve the spare parts from where they are stored, we may be able to repair the Guizhong Ballista. One just needs to understand the basic working principles of the device. So... what you're saying is that you actually understand the working principles? I have a smattering of knowledge on the topic. With the parts in hand, I could at least tinker with it. Where is that supply post? Here, posty, posty, posty. These parts look useful. One moment. I will try to repair the device. It is done. The Guizhong Ballista is more intricately designed than I thought. Ooh! Now how do we turn it on? It's easy enough. We simply need to do this. Look, it even has a scope. Over here we have... nothing. And over there... more nothing. Hey! Just what do you think you're doing? So you fixed up this turret because you're planning to do what, exactly? Not a turret. A Guizhong Ballista. Also, kindly state your name before you ask a question. It's just good manners. Ha! <laughs> Are you blind or something? You're looking at the leader of the treasure hoarders, old man. This area is supposed to be chock full of hidden treasures, but you can't get anywhere near them with this thing keeping watch. <laughs> it might look like any other mechanical device, but trust me, it's got a mind of its own. Last time we approached the mountain, it nearly skewered one of our guys. A few of us risked our lives to disarm it, which amazingly we managed. And then we turn our backs for two seconds, and you've already gone and repaired it! The next thing you'll be repairing is your faces, and that's if you get out of this alive! Tut tut. Vandalizing the legacy of an Adeptus for selfish gain. Disgraceful behavior. It is not we who need reprimanding, but you. Swift and merciful, submit for judgment. Midnight Phantasmagoria. These lowlifes didn't know who they were messing with. Troubling ourselves over this rabble is not worth the time. 
We should focus on our contract with Chi Chi. Oh, yeah, that! So we've got the Guizhong Ballista working, but where's our Coca Goat? A search using the Guizhong Ballista revealed no significant life forms nearby, save for the usual wildlife. What's more, a contraption built using Adeptus technology should have no trouble detecting an Adepta beast, as Chi Chi put it. <sighs> Which means. A Paimon wouldn't go that far. We did something positive, right? <sighs> we won't solve anything while standing here and racking our brains. Let's return to Boo Boo Pharmacy, explain that we could not find a Cocoa Goat, and review our next step. Good idea. We did our best, and that's what counts. Forgive us. We were unable to fulfill our end of the contract. We found no trace of the Cocoa Goat Adepta Beast of which you speak. <sighs> what a disappointment. Don't worry about it. But I feel very disappointed. Aw, poor Chi Chi. Why does Paimon feel so guilty all of a sudden? Cocoa Goat milk is tasty. So tasty. Much better than normal goat milk. Only an Adepta Beast could make such tasty milk. I'm sorry. I have a poor memory. I cannot remember the name of the milk. That's why I wrote it down. Where did I put it? Ah, here. This is the name. Coconut milk. Huh? <sighs> I owe you both an apology. I hastily agreed to what appeared to be an equitable agreement with this zombie child, when perhaps I should have undertaken further due diligence. Never mind, Zhongli. You didn't know. As the Leeway proverb goes, all things are random and... Um... So how are you supposed to predict anything? Literally no one could have seen this coming. Excuse me, everyone. Did Chi-Chi say a bad thing? Oh, Sorry, but Paimon's gonna leave the job of shattering this poor kiddo's world to you. No. Im... Impossible. Seems Chi-Chi took this pretty hard. <laughs> Someone learnt a valuable life lesson today, then. Thank you all for looking after my little Chi-Chi. Might I ask who? Ah, how rude of me. I'm Baiju, boss of the Boo Boo Pharmacy. Paimon thought Chi-Chi was the boss. Turns out it's some wacko who wears medicinal ingredients around his neck. What a sorry state of affairs. This little mascot is even more of a simpleton than Chi-Chi. Ah, the medicine... the snake is speaking! I prefer to stay silent, but faced with strangers, I must speak, lest you mistake me for an escapee from the medicine cabinet, for I am a living, breathing serpent! <laughs> Don't mind Chung Sheng. She's a good girl, really. As for you three, Communal chaos causing with Chi-Chi aside, what business brings you here? Do you sell everlasting incense in this fine establishment? Everlasting incense? Why, of course we do. Whew, at last. Things are finally starting to come together. Three million more. Top quality. Guaranteed. Aw, oh, too bad the chi Sing have taken it over for now. Security will be tighter than usual. Hmm. Three million. An innocuous number in and of itself. Though practically speaking, it could be a hard sum to come by. It's a crazy number! We'd never be able to make that much more of. And as for Mr. Zhang Li, he's around three million short. <laughs> this is correct. What are we gonna do? Is this the part where we go crawling back to child? <laughs> <laughs> Coco Goat! Coco Goat! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> my sides hurt. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe you fell for that. Hey, less laughter, more sympathy. <laughs> I'm almost in tears over here. Ah, uh, thank you. That was the best laugh I've had in a long time. In return, I'm more than happy to sort out this mess you've managed to get yourselves into. Excuse me, sir. Dr. Baiju, isn't it? Truly honored. I'm Child, one of the Fatui Harbingers. Forgive my audacity, but I see a great many opportunities for us to collaborate in the future. If Ubu Pharmacy needed a stable supply of, say, coconut milk, the Fatui could help by setting up a robust and speedy distribution network. Strange. I knew the Fatui infiltrated businesses with seductive deals, but so much fuss over coconut milk? Coconut milk. Baiju, quick. Chi-Chi wants coconut milk. Ah, yes, of course, Chi-Chi. Anything you want. Thank you, child. I look forward to a successful collaboration in the future. I can give you a discount on that everlasting incense, too. Let's say 2,990,000 more. That's like zero difference from 3 million! Hmm. 2,990,000. Also an innocuous number in and of itself. Though practically speaking, it is a whole 10,000 less than the original sum of 3 million. Well, now that this is settled, we must head back to Yujing Terrace. Mr. Child, Dr. Baiju, little Miss Chi Chi, see you soon. Ah, that lot is an absolute riot. Honestly, I can't remember the last time I laughed so hard. So, you've been eavesdropping, I hope. What have I missed? Yes, Master Child. They spoke of the Qixing taking the Golden House. Well, well, well. Ningguang and her Qixing cronies. What else would they be hiding in the Golden House, if not the Exuvia? I apologize, but I warned you, didn't I? As the old Leo saying goes, the walls have ears. This is good. There will be coconut milk from now on. Yes, it's good. What an odd exchange we've had. Well, I look forward to your patronage in the future as well. <laughs> and that sound is the laughter of a man who's found new people to fleece. Consider yourselves warned. Well, as it stands, we've hired helpers, and we've acquired the everlasting incense. The completion of our preparations is not far off. <gasps> Finally! Well, Traveler, have you gained anything from our adventure so far? Odd. <laughs> Which is it, I wonder? The questions that such travels raise are ever so complicated. Well, I'll leave you to ruminate over it yourself. As to remuneration for your help, I've decided... to treat you to a meal. Oh, ah, yes, don't worry. I will remember to bring the Mora this time. Tonight, I shall take you both to an old hole in the wall, praised throughout Liu. Hole in the wall? As in a cool restaurant? <laughs> Indeed. Let us meet near the harbor, at third round knockout. <laughs> Ah, you're here. There's no need to order. I've already done so. Third round knockout is not for lightweights, like those taverns in Mondstadt. Here, the owner does not take such unorthodox orders as fruit juice. I ordered some wine-fermented sweet rice balls for you, if that counts. If it is to your liking, dear customers, I shall continue the tale of Lady Ningguan's Jade Chamber. Hey! There's even a storyteller here! Great atmosphere! Besides fine wine, the excellent ambiance is the reason why this place is so well loved. But when I say ambiance, I refer to a different sort from the one the Tevat Travel Guide uses to judge other establishments. As you all know, High above the land of Liyue lies a pavilion in the clouds, a palace in the mist. What does it mean to have all-seeing eyes? This, my friends, 
Lady Ningguan's masterwork that bridges earth and sky. Imagine, the weather is clear, and you gaze down from the deck on the world below. Behold, the glorious sights of Liyue Harbor, stretching out far and wide. They say that when Lady Ningguang ponders important affairs, she retreats to her jade chamber with none but her three closest confidants in tow. Why brings she these trusted three to sift through sources, dig through documents, looking for information? Piece by piece, facts and figures paint a picture on the walls of the chamber. But well before the wall is filled, Lady Ningguang's mind is made up. Having made her call, she has every last document shredded, and whoosh, she scatters the shavings out her window. Ah, look at them, how they billow in the wind like a sudden swirling blizzard. As the fragments fall, traces of text flicker before the eyes of the merchants of Liyue, like ink stains in white snow. The saying goes, the rarest treasures in the land are the words brought by the paper snow. For the words of the Tianquan have the power to move mountains, and all throughout the land know it. These are but scraps of paper, and yet they guide Lady Ningguang's hand. Such is their value. Merely grasping one or two of them will surely gift you a fragment of her wisdom. Enough to stay a step or two ahead of your peers. Tiantuan Ningguang. Feels like we're hearing this name a lot. Lily locals talk about her. The Fatui hate her. She's most likely the one who hid the Exuvia. And we saw her at the Rite of Dissension. Huh. Paimon wonders what sort of person she is. At last I have found you. You who returned from Juayun Karst. Who's there? Wait, I am not with the Millilith, nor am I here to claim your bounty. However, I am an emissary of the Liyue Chising. My name is Ganyu, secretary at the Yuahai Pavilion, and I have come specifically to meet you. Well, in concrete terms, I am the corporate secretary for the Chising. At the moment, I am serving as Lady Ningguang's special emissary. Ningguang sent you? We were literally just talking about her. My apologies, you who have returned from Jiayuan Karst. I am duty-bound and cannot extend my courtesy to you in full. But I have with me a letter from Lady Ningguang. She extends a formal invitation to you in her capacity as Tianquan. She invites you to her palace in the sky. An official invitation? Lady Ningguang said this. Invite her to come here. I wish to meet her. At the Jade Chamber, together we shall snip every one of these entwining dark threads. And with that, the emissary who called herself Ganyu just disappeared. But we've received an invitation from the Liyue at Chising. Paimon still can't believe it. We'll be meeting people that have way more money than Paimon could ever count. We should be on our best manners. <laughs> an invitation to visit the Jade Chamber is a rare honor indeed. You'd best be on your way now. But don't forget about the right of parting. Once you've finished at the Jade Chamber, meet me at Dihua Marsh. Don't worry, we won't forget! Dihua Marsh, we'll see you there! To our success!